Hello everyone, it's Shannon here for Waffle Flower Crafts. In today's technique video, I'm going to be showing you a really fun technique where you're painting the background with a credit card or a gift card. I'm using these Waffle Flower products today. First up is the Balloon Messages stamp set. I'll be using some sentiments from that set. I'll be completing my backgrounds with some die cuts. This is the cross stitched heart die. I'm also going to be using the beautiful magical flower border die. This was illustrated by Helen Dardick, as well as this magical butterfly, also illustrated by Helen Dardick. Really beautiful dies. And then I'll also use the stitch layers die to just add a nice stitched border. To start, I have some watercolor panels. So these are A2 panels, so they're four and a quarter by five and a half, cut from watercolor cards or watercolor paper. I'm going to be using Distress Oxides today. Um, for, I'm using four shades, Wild Honey, Peacock Feathers, Picked Raspberry, and Wilted Violet. I have a piece of plastic here. This is actually what my scoreboard came out, came um, in. <laughs> and I'm just going to smush some of this Distress Oxides onto this piece of plastic. This is basically going to be my palette. And then I showed you just a second ago, I'm going to spritz some water. So I just have a fine um, misty bot uh, bottle that sprays a fine mist of water. I'm just going to spritz that a couple times over the distress oxides to kind of get them runny and liquidy. And then um, I'm going to mix it up with the credit card. So I'll hold it up here to the camera too so you can kind of see the beading. I do want this um, kind of um, watered down, pretty much really watered down, but it's not running. You can see that it's not so much water that it's running around on my surface. And then I'll use an old um, gift card. You could use a credit card, doesn't matter. And I'm using the shorter side, so I'm holding, just going to use the shorter side to mix up the, the ink and the water, and then I'm kind of barely scooping it up there. It just kind of collects on the edge of your credit card. You don't have to like scoop it up, but, and then I'll just swipe it a little bit. I'm swiping it vertically or horizontally just to get different directions to the swipe. And I'm going to do this mostly almost all over the panel. I am starting with my lightest color and then moving to my next shade. And you can see I did clean my credit card before I dipped in the other color. So the next color is the picked raspberry. And I'm, I am kind of swiping it in some of the white areas, the open areas where I didn't um, do the yellow. And I am go overlapping where I've had the yellow, which is nice with these. I was very careful with my color choices and I picked ink colors that I knew when they layered on top of each other, they would um, make some nice new shades, not create like a muddy or uh, kind of brown or gray colors. I'm just now hitting it with my heat gun because it's getting a little wet. And I want to set those colors before I move on to a next shade. I don't want it to mix too much. I still want them to be kind of their own color. So now I'm moving on to the, the um, peacock feathers. Really beautiful color, one of my favorites. And I love how the peacock feathers, when it's over the um, pink, it looks kind of purple. And when it is layered over the yellow, it kind of turns green. So it was a really good, it's a really good color in this mix. And if you want to play it safe, you can definitely use colors that are all kind of almost in the same family or very close to each other in the um, color wheel, like red, pink, and purple would be a good one, especially for Valentine's Day. So there's lots of other colors. You could even do like a blue and green palette, and that way you don't have to worry so much about your colors laying on top of each other and kind of creating mud or um, a muddy look. And last, I'm finishing up here with just a little bit of this wilted violet. This is the one I have to be very careful with because it can kind of go a little brown on the yellow and like kind of the orange where the picked raspberry and wild honey mixed and made like an orange. So I just used it a little bit, very sparingly, but I did like the little bit that the um, purple added. And now I'm just finishing up with a little bit more of the yellow, so a little bit more of the wild honey here, just to kind of fill in some of those spots. And that's all done. I'm going to heat set this, actually. And while I'm heat setting this, I actually created another one. So I have two backgrounds, exactly the same process, same colors. And I just see how vibrant they are. Ugh, I just really love um, you could definitely use do different inks. I love how the Distress Oxides worked with this. They're kind of opaque, um, 
but also when they're mixed with the water they're kind of transparent but um, I really liked the layering of those distressed oxide just because they have a little bit more opacity than um, distressed inks but distressed inks would work well so right now I'm taking one of these panels and I'm die cutting the stitched the cross stitch heart and the stitch layers die to create this smaller panel here with this beautiful negative stitched heart on it so I'll peel it off here and you can see um, it's a really beautiful die I love this cross stitched heart die. It's just really pretty and I think it works really well for backgrounds. It's a really great die for backgrounds because it um, it's just creates a simple negative of like a cross stitch heart. And I'm just going to pop out here with my uh, die pick here and popping out all the negatives real fast. And you can see how pretty that die is. Just a couple more and push those aside. So there I have a nice, because I used that stitch layers, I got a nice stitched um, border and then I have that beautiful cross stitch heart. So now I have two A2 panels made from a white 110 pound cardstock. I'm going to go ahead and take that same stitched layers die and run it through my die cutting machine. And so I will have, um, when I'm done, I'll have a frame with this beautiful um, detail, this like slash line detail all around the frame. And then I'll also have that cross stitch, I'm sorry, not cross stitch, I'm sorry, stitched border on that smaller panel. I'm going to keep both those pieces, the frame and the panel. Now for my second card, I'm going to die cut um, just the magical flower border die as well as the magical um, butterfly. And this magical butterfly comes with like the butterfly um, outline or the butterfly, whole butterfly, and then these beautiful like wings that you add onto the butterfly really nice little detail. Just going to pop these out of the white cardstock and then set them all aside. So I just jumped ahead a little bit here um, and I'm pulling out now just the uh, magical flower border die. Just carefully pulling that out and I have all my die cuts ready and I'm pretty much now ready to assemble my card except for I have to do a little bit of stamping. I've stamped my sentiment. I've got my two panels in here that I'm going to stamp on. I'm just laying now my um, die cuts on the larger panel just to kind of get my um, position or my centering of my um, sentiment correct. I'm going to pull off sentiments from the balloon messages stamp set. I'm going to use two different sentiments from this set. This is a really great stamp set. Some really beautiful sentiments in this set and they're very versatile. I'm just going to fold over my Misty here once I get the sentiments in place, pick up this, the um, stamps, and then I'm going to put down some anti-static powder here because I will be doing some embossing, some heat embossing. I'm going to ink up my sentiments with Versamark ink. I'm going to ink them up and I'll stamp them once. And then I'm going to go ahead and ink them up and stamp them a second time. I just like to do this almost always when I have anything in my Misty because it's just so easy to do and it assures that I have plenty of ink down so my embossing powder sticks no problem. So now I'm going to pull these out and I will pour on some white embossing powder. So very, very simple here. Just pour it on right over the stamp sentiment and then tap off the excess. And I'll do the exact same thing to the um, second panel as well. And then I will heat set this with my heat gun. So, and it's always good to have your heat gun um, really warmed up. So have it sitting there heating up before you actually start to heat set the embossing powder on your card. Just avoids some warping. So now that I've got my sentiments um, all heat set, I'm now really ready to put these cards together. I've already went ahead and added some foam tape to the back of the die cuts, the uh, magical flower board border die cut and the magical butterfly die cut. And I also um, cut some craft foam to be this, about the same size as the heart panel. And I'm going to use that just to add a little bit of dimension to this first card. So I'm going to start here with some mono Tombow Mono multi-liquid adhesive and I'm going to add it everywhere on the back of this panel, even in those little um, sections between the cross stitches. And um, then I will take my finger and kind of smooth out that uh, glue. And this is just to help prevent it from kind of oozing out into those negative areas and then being visible on that, that white cardstock. 
and then I will hold it down um, with my hands here just to kind of get that glue to set, which doesn't take very long, and that just ensures that all my corners are nice and um, flat, no curling of my corners. And then I will now glue the craft foam right to the back of that panel using the Tombow Mono Liquid Adhesive again. I love this adhesive for my craft foam. It works really well. It's very strong and whole, and it sets very quickly too. And I'm going to use it again to just adhere this panel straight to my card base. This is a top folding A2 card base. So it was cut at four and a quarter by 11 and then scored at five and a half. And now I'm just going to finish off with this frame. And I just like the little addition. There's a little bit of um, like stitching on this frame. And I just like that little bit of texture, a little bit more texture added to the card. It just really finishes it off. And just hold it all down here. And that card is done. Now I'm going to move on to my second card. I'm first going to add some glue to the back of my watercolor panel. And then I will stick it directly onto my A2 top folding white card base. Hold it down. And for my card base, I always use 110 pound white cardstock. I really like the thickness of that cardstock. I really think it makes a substantial um, card and it can really handle um, this liquid adhesive. If you use a lower weight cardstock, you're probably going to have to use a tape runner. I prefer the liquid adhesive. I don't have to worry about it. gives me a little bit of time so I don't have to get my card panel centered right on the first go. I can kind of wiggle it into place thanks to the liquid adhesive. So I just added a little bit of glue to the base of this Magical Flower Border die and, and then I have at the upper portion of the Magical Flower Border die that's where my foam tape is. And this just creates a nice like flush um, the Magical Flower Border die is flush with the base of my card, but then it has a little bit of dimension up towards the center of my card. I just really like that look. I think it has a very clean look. I just pulled off the foam backing on the butterfly, and now I'm going to finish off by adding these wings. Again, I'm using the liquid glue, and I just use my finger to kind of smooth down any of that the beading of the glue, and this just helps to prevent um, my glue getting everywhere. It will just be on the back of that um, die cut where I want it. And I just realized that I'm putting the wrong wings in the wrong place, so I quickly pulled that one off and then switched them around. I'm just going to trim off the excess here with my scissors, and that card is done as well. I really love these magical um, dies, the magical butterfly, the magical flower border with this background. I think these dies are so beautiful, and they really make for simple elegant gar cards, just you need a beautiful colorful background and then boom, the die. So I love it. And then this cross stitch heart works so well, I think with this credit card panel. I really like how these cards turn out and they're so easy to do. I hope you guys enjoyed my video today. If you want any more information on the products I use, please visit waffleflower.com and you can follow us on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook for more creative ideas. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.